Hi everyone, Rebecca Rhodes here. Thanks for joining me. I wanted to give you an update on a refinement or maybe a change that I made to our Fox course, specifically to the nose. I'm thinking maybe this will be helpful if you've ever run into a situation where you're almost finished with your painting and you realize you're just not happy with something. Well, there is a way to fix it. This is an example of how it is possible to make changes in your painting, even if you're pretty far in. So I'm hoping that what I show you here will maybe help you, or will at least provide another technique for making adjustments to your painting. So let's get into this. I'll show you how in the painting, I removed the entire nose and repainted it. And I hope this will be helpful to you if you ever run into this situation. Let's get started. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lift out as much of this nose as I can using plain water and my damp brush. I'll use one of my older brushes, but if you don't have an old brush, that's okay. Use what you have on hand. I've got a paper towel in my hand and I'll dip the brush in water to dampen it and wipe it on the towel. So the brush is damp. It's not dripping wet, but damp. I've got my paper towel in one hand and I'll start here in the center, gently touching the nose with the damp brush. And this will move the color around. I'm staying within the lines and touch it with the paper towel. And I'll keep gently working at it, still staying within the dark lines and the colors beginning to move around. Every time I touch it with the paper towel, a little bit more comes off. I created this nose with mixes of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, and both of those colors lift very easily. So do you see right now I'm working inside the edge? I'm lifting out as much of the color as I can. It won't all come out, but most of it will, and I'm using a very gentle touch. Now let's see about those edges. I'm going to work inward because I don't want to pull the color into the surrounding area. And I'm gently touching at that edge and then hit it with the paper towel. I need to especially be careful here because I don't want to pull that dark color into the white area. So I'll just go over the edge gently. And my brush is just slightly damp. Here I'm kind of pushing the color inward. Here I'm being careful so I don't pull the color into the surrounding fur.
So this has removed most of the paint, although you can still see a little bit there. This is dry, and I'll see if I can lift out just a bit more color, but I don't want to affect the paper too much. So I'm being gentle. And the paper will feel a little different when you go back in to make refinements. Okay, I think that will do it. So when that's dry, I'll move in for refinements. This is dry and ready to go. The first thing I'll need to do is recreate the drawing. Here's the original drawing created on a piece of tracing paper. Let's see if I turn it over. I've got a piece of watercolor paper underneath. And if I trace the edges with my inexpensive mechanical pencil, I'll just trace around. And then turn it back over. I've got some pieces of masking tape ready to go. And I'll line up the nose. You want to make sure everything is lined up. And I can still see the previous lines, so that's helping. Line it up with the mouth and tape it down. Now let's see if I can just trace over these lines. Some artists use a pen to do this. I can very faintly see the lines. If you feel like that's not dark enough, here are some other options. Go over the nose. Now this is the back of the drawing. So I'm laying down some graphite. But it's pale enough that I can still see the lines of the nose. And we'll line it up again, tape it down, trace over it. Let's see how that looks. Okay, that's better. I can see the lines much better. Now, if that doesn't seem to work, here's another option. You could take a piece of graphite paper and I'll put the shiny side down underneath and that will create an even darker image. Do you see how that creates an even darker image? So there you've got some different options for redrawing your image. And now to recreate this nose, I'll use the steps found in the formula from the course on how to create noses. In the first step, we'll create a map of the prominent lines and shapes that we can use as a guide as we move further into this nose. This is a gray mix of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And I'll add a little bit of water, pull some color out to the side, creating the consistency of thin milk. I'm aiming for a neutral gray that's not too blue or too brown, and that's looking good. This is my zero brush. I'll pick up just a bit of color on the tip of the brush, and let's lay in where the prominent lines and shapes are, starting with the nostril. Now, if that appears a little too pale, you could go slightly darker, but I don't want to go too dark too soon. So we'll touch that in, and over here, there's that little bit of the other nostril. Up there is going to be a darker value, and I'll just go around the edge with the very tip of the brush.
there's that vertical line and there's another bit of a line right there okay I'll go over that edge right there and up there okay so keep it pale this may appear a little scary for a while until you get your colors back in place but things will come together so allow that to dry and next we'll create a pale map of the colors found underneath the darker textures and shapes and we'll start with the underpainting I'm going to apply this burnt sienna anywhere that will eventually be the darkest parts and also in areas of the nose where I see a brownish black and this pale burnt sienna will serve as the foundation for those darker values to come it will help to create darker blacks and I'm doing a little bit of softening with my slightly damp brush first I'll create this shape where I think it's lightest up here and right along here it's lighter in value if your color appears a little too brown you might want to use a gray that leans more towards blue and that is appearing kind of brown I'd like to see more of a gray color here so I'm picking up a gray that contains more blue in the mix that's better it's still a little brownish but we can make adjustments so I'm keeping it lighter in value right along the edge of the nostril and I want it to be lighter along this edge too so I just go around that nostril and then just fill everything in taking it slightly darker including the nostril I'm using a touching motion I think I'll go a little bit darker up here this is dry and I'll use my slightly damp brush to go in and soften some edges right around those lighter shapes and if you need to this would be a good time to lift out color where you think is needed maybe if you feel like you took that mid-tone a little too far and want to see a little more of the lighter shape I'm beginning to lose where the darkest parts are so next I'll reinforce those darkest shapes now you might need to experiment with the kind of gray you use I'm using a gray that leans a little more towards blue it's got a little bit more blue in the mix this is the consistency of whole milk at this point and I'll reinforce those darkest parts now if you feel like it's not dark enough you could use a slightly thicker consistency I'll take it right over the nostrils I'm doing this very gently I'm hardly touching the brush to the paper I'm using the very tip of the brush to go around and reinforce what I'd like to be the darkest parts
as I reinforce these dark lines, it's really helping to clean up the shapes where things were beginning to appear sloppy. Now that is making much more sense already. Allow it to dry. We've reinforced where the darkest parts will be, and everything is looking cleaner. Next, I'll move back to the mid-tones to create the beginnings of contour and curve in this nose, and start to take things darker. I'd like to create the impression that this part of the nose is curving inward, and I'll do that by going slightly darker here, not quite as dark as that. I'll start with the consistency of thin milk, but I'm not sure if this will be dark enough. Yeah, that's not dark enough, so I'll move to whole milk, and I need a little bit more blue in my mix so it doesn't appear as brownish. And I'll go a little bit darker right there. Initially, this is going to appear pretty dark, but now I'm going to soften with my slightly damp brush. Just touch the edge of the color, and that will become lighter in value. So I'm going to continue laying in mid-tones where I would like to see the impression of contour or curving inward, and it's going to be around the edges mostly. You see how I apply color and then I rinse my brush and wipe it on the towel and soften edges. Touch in a little bit right here. And right away, I'll soften. Make sure your brush is barely damp. Maybe up here. When I touch the edge of the color, it becomes lighter in value, and that's okay. I'll go back in when it's dry and make reinforcements. So I'm keeping this shape lighter in value for now, and also these two shapes. Although I think I could adjust that shape. I'm going just a little bit darker. There we go. And maybe take that a little darker. So what we're doing is applying mid-tones those values that aren't the darkest or the lightest, and we're using them to create contour and curve. And I'm also beginning to think about creating smooth transitions from dark to light, and we can use the mid-tones to do that. That's dry, and I'll continue to refine right here. Do you see I've got a hard line? What you can do is touch in little dots of color And that will take that area a little darker and smooth that transition even more. Do a little bit of softening, and that has been cleaned up. Now I'm starting to think about creating maybe some textures as I apply these little dots of color. So by applying dots of color, with the very tip of the brush, you can create smoother transitions from dark to light and slightly adjust values. And you can really take your time doing it. So I'm now laying in dots of color wherever I would like to go a little bit darker, such as right here. I need to use a bluish gray here. As far as the consistency goes, make decisions based on how dark you wish to go. If it's not dark enough, use a slightly thicker consistency. If it's too dark, thin out your consistency with water. I'm softening. Just kind of moving the color around where I'd like it to go. 
So by applying midtones and tiny dots of color, we're creating the impression of inward curve and we're creating smoother transitions from dark to light. And these shapes are becoming much too pale, aren't they? What I'll do is pick up a thinner consistency of the bluish gray. I'll start with the consistency of T, just a tiny bit of color on the brush. Touch in little dots into that pale shape. And it's taking that pale shape slightly darker because that's only the consistency of T. Maybe I'll touch in just a couple in that shape. You see how it's going a little bit darker? but you can still tell that those are the lightest shapes. And I'm using a bluish gray due to the browns underneath. Now that will dry quickly and you can continue to touch in tiny textures wherever you'd like to go a little darker or make adjustments in value. One thing I'm noticing is this part of the nostril is becoming too pale. So I'm going to pick up a thicker consistency. This is like, thin cream. Make sure it's dry and I'll just go in and reinforce that part of the nostril. So you can make adjustments at any time like that. As that dries, I'll give attention to this area which I'd like to see darker and this area just slightly darker. I'll use the bluish gray because we've got some brown there already and touch in the color. This is pretty thin. It's like thin milk. And when you soften the edges, just touch the edges. It will appear even lighter in value. Now down here, I'd like to apply a bit of gray, but there's white underneath. So I'm going to lay in a neutral gray here. That's the consistency of tea. I'll keep it very pale, give it a chance to dry, and then go darker if needed. There, I just laid in a bit of ultramarine blue because I still felt like that wasn't dark enough. This is coming along really nicely and we're getting ready to apply the final details. And at this point, I encourage you to make decisions based on what you see in your painting. I'm going to stop looking at it for a while because I know that upon returning, I'll see with fresh eyes if there's anything that needs to be adjusted. This nose is very close to being finished. And typically I would use a thin glaze to adjust color, take the nose a little darker and slightly smooth everything. But because we've got so many dark values in this small shape, I'm holding off on a glaze because I don't want to smear and smudge these layers of color. Instead, to make adjustments in color and value, I'm touching in tiny dots of color and softening. And I encourage you to make decisions based on what you'd like to see in your painting. Here are the kinds of things I'm looking at in making final refinements. Do you need to reinforce the darkest parts again with the consistency of thin cream? If your color's appearing a little too brown, use a bluish gray or even ultramarine blue. If it appears too blue, use a brownish gray. Do you need to adjust any shapes that are too dark Maybe you want to lift out color with your damp brush. At this point, I'm making minute adjustments. Just slight refinements. And really taking my time. I feel like I went a little too dark right here, so I'm gently touching that area right underneath the nostril. Knowing that when it's dry, I can go back in and make refinements. 
Do you need to reinforce mid-tones to enhance contour and curve or to create smoother transitions from dark to light? Especially here, along here, and up here. Are there any shapes that appear too pale? Or do you need to adjust your pale shapes? Right here, this is looking a little too white, so I'll touch in a bit of color with the tip of the brush. I still want to see where those lighter shapes are, but they don't need to be super pale. Here's an optional step. Often the upper nose has a bluish hue and I'm touching in some very pale ultramarine blue at the top of the nose to represent the reflection of the sky. That appears a little sloppy, but allow it to dry and see how it looks then. I'll do a bit of refining outside the nose going a little bit darker around it. I'm touching in little dots of color here to create a smoother transition from the darkest part of the nose into the surrounding area. So at the end of the painting, I've been making very slight and gentle refinements, knowing that I can lift color as needed very gently. And when it dries, I can go back in and make adjustments. And often just a couple dots of color make a difference. Well, I hope this will help you if you ever run into a time when you have to make changes in your painting. Now, there are other ways that you can remove color, but I just thought for this pretty small nose, it would be easiest just to lift things out with that damp brush. So thanks for watching, and I'd love to hear what you think. See ya.